past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for why hello there hello hello everybody this is Kirusho here and before I do begin I'm gonna make this easy on me my dumbass forgot to say a month or even a certain time frame before you UA that is why I have not been able to figure out where I left off. Anyways. Now. Let us say that this is 10 months before UA. That's whenever Izuki moved into, and actually going to stay with, Mitsuki and Bakugo, along with their father, well, Bakugo's dad. I honestly do not remember that man's name at all. Anyways. Now, with that being said, we will pick up five months later with Izuki in her room. Currently, she is doing calisthenic workouts. Her doing push-ups with one of her hands. Meanwhile, she does have a book in her other hand, and she is currently trying to read it. Baku actually walking by her room and seeing her do this. Hmm. <laughs> Jeez. You look like you're having a bit of fun. Hmm? What do you want, Bakugo? She says, not even really looking up or stopping her workouts. Bakugo just telling her that she's going a bit too far, doesn't she think? Her saying no as she quickly brings up her hand. Now. She then brings out her left hand and is able to grab the book out of midair right even before she begins to fall. Bakugo kind of surprised by that. She was just using her right hand to push, right? Hmm. Anyways, what are you doing? Hmm? I'm learning more about computers. Why? It's none of your business. Let's just say I've needed to learn a bit more about them, so I have been. In fact, well, there's also something else going on. But I don't believe you, you should get concerned with it. Uh, okay. <sighs> Anyways. I was going to go out today and train for UA, but I guess you're busy. Hmm? UA? Oh, that hero school thing you're going to go do? Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, just remember to clean your sweat up. Especially after what happened last time. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Now, Izuki, she continues on with her workouts. Along with actually beginning to... Think a bit more about this. After she does get cleaned up and takes a shower, she actually does head back to her room. Before she quite simply sits down at the laptop she has on her desk, opens it up, and begins to look online. Now, she then does walk over and lock her, lock her door. Before she heads back over and opens a drawer with a key pulling out multiple things that she would need. Her connecting into her laptop, and then beginning to properly do what she needs to. She sets her laptop off of an international server. Basically, she begins to connect her laptop to different servers all around the world. Then piggybacking, well, I don't really know a lot about hacking, Basically, she does everything that you need to do to make sure this laptop is secure. Along with that, she begins to build a firewall. 
a better one based off of the code she just read. Now, after she does that, she begins to try and hack into international servers and everything that she would need to. Looking to see the information she got off of that woman's computer. Or, actually this is her laptop, not her computer. Anyways. Now. Izuki keeps looking. And the more she begins to dig, the more and more things begin to make sense. Apparently, they were part of a Black Widow project. Ironic. First off, that must be one of the reasons why she was chosen. And her in particular. But that does bring up another question. Why were the other ones chosen? The other girl she can understand because of her knife quirk. Her best friend... Well... Yui. Apparently she was from Japan. And upon looking into her identity more, well, her parents died years ago. There is a public record of it, and she's even visited their graves. Now, with that, a couple hours to go by, and she keeps digging, before she eventually does have to disconnect and join them out for dinner. Now, as they are all sitting down, you do have Mitsuki, who actually does begin to ask a bit more about Russia, and li how life was there. You do have Izuki, Izuki basically avoid the questions by just saying that she didn't understand a lot about it there. In fact, where she grew up, there wasn't really a whole lot of people. Even then, you basically did stay outside a lot, and we usually hunted our own food. Now, Bakugo does pose a question as to how does she hunt with a cork like that? Does she just basically get cut or something and take them down, or what? Her... Surprising Bakugo by saying, actually, she uses a firearm. Hmm? A gun? Well, yeah. It's sort of easy. What is it? It's really easy to take care of a rifle. Along with that, it's just sort of the way things became. Besides, her going on a state by accident... Mr. Ivan and all the other adults usually do go on food runs. Even then, they were once dropped off, her stopping by grabbing her mouth and not saying another word. Mitsuki going on to ask exactly who is Mr. Ivan. Her quickly getting up from the dinner table and grabbing her plates. Now, she quite simply just scoops off all the food into the trash, goes over to the sink, and puts it in there before quickly walking back to her room. Now, they do try and understand a bit more about this. Apparently she's uncomfortable talking about her past. However, Mitsuki, she does somewhat understand that. After this girl came to them, she was given a full story. Mr. Ivan was the man who she saw as a father figure. In fact, he took care of her after her parents died. Then, whenever she came to kill her, she killed him. Ironic how the world works. Now, with that, the next day, Izuki, she is actually out and about. It is very late at night, and she is at least a bit more curious. In case anything does happen, she needs to have a fallback location. A place where she can store things. Her own little safe house within this city. Now, 
she actually is patrolling in a heavily, heavily armed area of the city. There is a lot of crime over here. And actually, it's begun to rise a little bit more. Izuki deciding to use her Black Ops training and her vast array of knowledge of martial arts to take them down. Now, she was able to get some of those weapons within that bag over to the U.S. Not the U.S. Oh, my brain. Over to Japan. Now, the only weapons that she can get were her gauntlets. Because people thought they, would, they were just a weird prototype for a hero equipment. And that the way that they were designed, you wouldn't really think of them as a weapon. Since at this point, they were only to standardize black bands. Now, along with that, she did eventually take down a few more men. Being able to take a few of their weapons before deciding to actually get this project started up. Now, tonight she is wearing a black mask and she is on top of a roof. Her deciding to actually take a peek inside. As soon as she does open up the roof, there you do have a current predicament. There are two men standing there with assault rifles. And they're both talking about what the deal was. One of them saying that they were supposed to deliver these, these, and these. While the other one is saying that they were supposed to pay these, these, and these. So clearly something shady is going down. Now. Izuki, she then watches a deal go wrong. Terribly wrong. A gunfight does break out, and she does estimate that heroes will be here within, most likely the soonest, 30 to 40 seconds. After 20 seconds of the gunfight, she breaks through the window. And falls through. Before she immediately brings her hands up and fires off, a few of the little bullets, or I guess you can call them explosives, within her gauntlets. Now, as soon as these little pallets do smash into a wall, they immediately begin to beep, before exploding. Now, as soon as Izuki does actually make her presence known, she drops in, immediately landing on top of the car full of weapons quickly slamming the trunk closed before jumping onto the guy. As soon as she does jump onto him, she brings her hand up and immediately tases him with her gauntlets, slipping her hand into his jacket and trying to feel around for keys. That being where she finds none. As soon as she does go to reach in his pocket, she actually just grabs the man's phone, thinking that this is not really important. Now. She actually does just pocket it at the moment. Before, with her other hand, she grabs the gun out of his pocket, or that was tucked into his waistband. Before quickly just spinning and firing off multiple shots. Now, she then does try and make quick work of all of the men right here. Whenever somebody actually does go to come out from behind the car with a gun, She's immediately able to grab the barrel and immediately point it straight upwards. Before bashing the gun and the sight that was on it directly into the man's face, cutting open a part of his nose. Before dropping the pistol and grabbing the other end of the gun and smashing it directly into his face. The man going to fall backwards as he actually does try and get up with a knife. Izuki holding the gun. The man simply just hesitating. Now, Izuki, she then just turns the gun around, and points it directly at the man, him dropping the knife and going to back away. Now, she then takes a couple steps forwards and picks up the blade. As soon as she does bend down, the guy does come charging right at her. Her immediately with two of her fingers, as soon as she did grab the blade, she flicks it upwards, 
being able to stab it into the man's side before she just comes up and immediately punches the guy with the butt of the butt of the stock of the gun. Now, she then does begin to try and find the keys that are in his pockets. No such luck. Upon inspecting the other guy, she's able to find them. Her quickly hopping into the car and starting it over. As pro heroes arrive. Now, with that being said, she begins to drive away. Now, as soon as she does actually smash the warehouse door with the car, she gets into a police chase. Them trying to quickly catch her. Now, they keep trying to tell her to stop the car and to get out with her hands up, as she's barreling at high speeds down the streets. Her actually spinning around a corner and taking a left. As she actually does turn right into a p underground parking garage. Now, as soon as that does actually happen, she quite simply does one thing. With the assault rifle in the passenger seat, she grabs it and immediately just begins by holding it out of the window and firing off at the lights. That does not really work. Now, she then actually does look in the back seat for anything that might be of use. Surprise, surprise. There is, is one thing that she can actually use. Her actually kind of intrigued by it. It is nothing more than a small little underbarrel grenade launcher. Her actually throwing it into the front sheet as she does begin to inspect the weapons in the back of the car, grabbing another rifle and aiming it out the window. Now, cops do begin to actually fire off at her car. Well, she's also having to deal with pro heroes who are in pursuit. Now, upon further inspection, they are able to determine that the person driving the car does not match up with the gang records, most likely labeling the person inside as a vigilante. Now, after Izuki does actually get a bit closer and closer, she is able to turn back onto a highway, except she's going the wrong way. Now, she's quickly just dodging and weaving between multiple cars. Luckily, it's a Tuesday night. There aren't usually a lot of drivers out on the highway around this time, but even then, there is quite a few for a typical city. Now, as she's driving, she just keeps firing off at the cops. And she actually does hit her mark, hitting the tires in the cop car and them being immobilized. As she continues driving. Now, eventually she believes that she got a good distance away from the cops. And she pulls back into another underground parking garage. The vehicle's already been identified. Her quickly taking the bag of weapons out of the, out of the back seat before immediately just pulling open the trunk, using force, and grabbing the other bags. Three of them. Now, as soon as that does happen, she gets ready, putting the under barrel onto the gun before loading it up. Now, as soon as that does happen, she's just holding it. And, this is whenever she does bring it up to aim and fire. As soon as she did fire, cops already began to funnel into the tunnel. And she smashed the grenade into a fuse box. All the lights exploding. As it's dark. Now, Izuki, she slips away in this moment. Being able to... Well, I won't... I won't, don't believe it would be too complicated. Basically, she would head to the lower levels, or at least another low level, and go back up whenever they don't expect her to. As soon as they would be able to re-establish some of the lights or the emergency lighting, it would already be too late. 
they would think that she possibly used her quirk to get away. They would still try and search the garage, but let's be honest. They would not find her. Now, roughly about an hour later, and her with a different car, she is actually pulling into an unknown warehouse. As she does that, she immediately offloads her weapons, before immediately walking over and ripping the plates off of the car, and then going over to an abandoned crate, or a ginormous metal shipping container, her grabbing the chains on it and beginning to pull, bring her leg up and beginning to pull more. As soon as she's able to pull the chains off and break them, she begins to open it up. Now, as that does happen, she does open it and find that there are not a lot of things in here. Now, she is able to move a lot of things around before backing the car inside. And, making sure that no one will be able to find it. Now, Along with that, she does hide the weapons inside the trunk, before at least closing the container back up, and simply just beginning to think. Okay, so, that's at least a very good start. But even then, hmm, with everything I've researched, I know that there are more facilities out there on the planet. Hell, there's probably one or two in this country. Then there's probably three more in Russia. Or no, wait. The Red Room file did state did state that there were a total amount of candidates. Hmm. Strange though. Is that overall within the time of its making, or is that just worldwide currently? Okay. Looks like I have to do a little bit more digging. Now, with that, she does head home. But anyway, guys, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.